you are unlimited. Welcome to Jumpstart Your Faith, a 40-day devotional to help you get your faith muscles moving. My name is Matt Meyer with Seed Ministries International. Thank you for joining us again today. Today is day 24. That's very exciting to me. Good job. We've made it two and a half weeks now of a 40-day journey. This is a pretty amazing thing. I'm, I'm so thankful that you've been joining with us. So thank you, thankful that you've been sharing uh, the truth of what you're receiving from the Word of God through this ministry, but it's not us. It's the Word. It's obviously the Word. Thank you for the Word. So let's get going with, um, yeah, let's start at Ephesians 4.13. That's a good place to start. It's always a good place to start. Why? Because it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Done. We can just end the video right now. You are unlimited. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you rely on your own strength, and this is what we do, this is what people do, what we've been trained to do, people uh, all over social media are like, if you do this and you really bear down and you just dig in and you say, I'm going to... I'm going to go to the gym six days a week. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to keep lifting. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to be the next uh, billionaire before I turn 30. That's okay. All of that's fine. If you're relying on your own strength, you're limited. You are severely limited in the things you can accomplish. There are some really good things you could accomplish, but not the unlimited nature of who Christ is, who God is within you. When you understand who and what you are in Christ Jesus, when you see yourself as God sees you, when you take him at his word, there isn't anything you can do. And I don't just mean natural things for yourself, I mean anything. Let's look at uh, Mark 16. You wanna see some unlimited things? Check this out. Mark 16, let's start with uh, verse 18. Sounds good. <laughs> Ready? Now let's go back. Let's go back to um, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. There's a lot of stuff in there that could uh, people could exploit that and end up getting wacky, go play with snakes. Don't go play with snakes, that's not what this is saying. You can take up a serpent. Uh, Paul, actually, that just jumped to it. Paul, a ship, there was a shipwreck, right? Uh, one of the shipwrecks that Paul was in, I think he was shipwrecked like 400 times, not really, but a couple of times. And he told the people, he told the captain before they go, he was on his way to Rome as a prisoner already. He said, he said, hey, y'all, don't go. God told me we don't, we shouldn't go. This is a bad idea. We're going to lose the ship. Everything's, you know, everything's going to be bad. Don't go, don't go. And they said, eh, we're not going to listen to you. We're going to go ahead and go. And then, of course, exactly what he said would happen started to happen. And Paul, they brought him up and like, okay, well, what do we do now? Like, you know, it seems like too little, too late. It wasn't, it wasn't at all too little, too late. Paul said, I prayed. And God said, we're losing the ship. Like, that's stupid. Like, what we did was stupid, we're losing the ship. But nobody, not a single person on this ship will drown. Not a single person. And they didn't, none of them did. And they all made it to shore. I don't know how far out they were, they didn't really say. But everybody survived. And then they showed up on the beach and they made a fire, because, you know, it's cold and wet. And out of the fire, a viper jumped, bit, bit Paul on the hand. I think it was, on, yeah, it had to be on his hand. And he shook it off which says right here, take up serpents. He shook off the viper, he shook off the serpent, and everybody thought, uh-oh, he's gonna die, and that he was cursed because the snake bit him. But he, nothing, nothing happened at all. There was no poison in that viper that affected the body of Paul. I don't know if it was a dry viper. You know, everybody tries to talk out, uh, get rid of miracles or uh, take them down as to as um, natural as possible. So I've seen, I have seen people raised from the dead. I'm not the only one. That happened in a church service. I saw somebody get raised from the dead and it you know, stopped breathing, entirely not functioning. I've, I've got testimonies galore. If you want to hear a few, 
keep tuning in because there's going to be more and more. And I'll take this time right now to say, go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, there's a link down below there because the newsletter will feed you every week, but it's also going to um, tell you where we are and what we're doing and the, uh, the kind of things you can expect from us. And it's just going to build your faith every week. And you'll get to hear more and more of the, the things God has accomplished uh, in our lives, but also in your lives. Every time you hear a testimony, it makes the bones fat. I saw somebody die. I've seen more than one person die and ra be raised from the dead. And one of the responses, you know, full out, not breathing, keeled over, completely gone. And by the power of God, by the declaring of the name of Jesus, saying, in the name of Jesus, wake up, get up, everybody, everybody recovered. Uh, I have seen, I'm just doing the numbers now, I have seen four people raised from the dead. Take it how you will. And some of you may be having the thought, and this is one of the comments, well, well, how long were they dead? Does it really matter? They stopped breathing, there was no heartbeat, they were dead, and now they're alive through the power of God. I don't care if it was one second of death or uh, four days, which is what Jesus did with uh, Lazarus. The power of God is in your hands. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's you. That's not, that's not limited to just the disciples. That's not limited to just the apostles. That's you. If you look at um, Stephen, who was stoned, and that's not uh, often who we look at, but when it was talking about Stephen, it was talking about a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost and with uh, power. Stephen was not an apostle. He was not a prophet. He was a, really for better lack of term, he was a table server. He was a server, really. The apostles were, had this big problem because there was a daily distribution to the widows and some of the, they seemed like the Jewish widows were being favored over the Grecian widows and, you know, politics, people stupid even then. The apostles said, shut up. Just take this away from us. We got to spend our time praying. Let's appoint people over, over that uh, group. And one of those people was Stephen. And it says, Stephen was full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Right here, Acts chapter 6, verse 8 says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. There are believers out there who think that the, uh, they've been taught that the Acts of the Apostles were the Acts of the Apostles, and all of that died out with the Apostles, and only the Apostles could do the miraculous things and uh, operate in the gifts of the Spirit. That's not true. Stephen was right then with them right there, and he was not an Apostle. And you know, then the argument might be, well, it was to help establish the church and you know get it going. That didn't change. The church is still being established. Unless everybody on the entire planet was in the church, the signs and wonders, the miraculous nature is not just uh, allowed to happen today. That's the way it's supposed to be. We are continually supposed to be operating in signs and wonders. I've seen four people raised from the dead. I laid hands on one of those four people. There are there are amazing things happening around the world and if you if you regulate god if you try to dismiss the supernatural element of of what god has done then you're limiting that power that god gave you to operate through you he told you that you can lay hands on the sick he also said that you can prosper for yourself and for other people in everything you set your hands to look at third john 2 third john there's only one chapter third john 1 2 it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. This is John the Elder when he's talking out of love. This is the, the disciple that Jesus loved. He says, I want, I want you to prosper and be in health above all things. That's the thing that I want for you. Well, it, do you think he wants something that God doesn't want? Do you think that he wants something that is not available, that he would just tease them with a carrot, dangle a carrot in front of the beloved, whoever this beloved person is, or beloved people are. No, that's not it at all. He said, you can prosper in everything, everything that you set your hand to. You can weather any storm. Storms show up. This is a fallen world. There are storms. There's storm clouds above me right now. You can weather any storm and you can do it rejoicing. Look at Philippians. Philippians 4, we looked at Philippians 4.13. 
Uh, let's look at what Philippians 4.4. 4. That's Romans. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You can do it with joy. You can just do it. It doesn't matter what you're facing. Your grandma dies, and she's the matriarch of the family, and it's hard. It's hard. It, that's not a negation of the emotion, and you're allowed to shed tears. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to work out, work through those emotions. But you're also allowed to rejoice in the goodness of God. You're also allowed to rejoice at where your grandma, if your grandma went to heaven, you can rejoice in that. If your grandma didn't go to heaven, that's a very sad thing, but it's, but it's okay. You can rejoice in the other people. Um, if we got caught up in the sadness of everyone who's ending up in hell, we wouldn't be able to fathom it. The, the goodness of God says nobody has to go there. So we need to make it a life mission to be ministers of reconciliation, to go, go out and bring life back, bring people back to life. Jesus told uh, his disciples, before they were even made new creatures, that they would be able to tell mountains to move and that the mountains would obey them. That's Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Read it. Read it every day. It's going to stir your faith. All they had to do was say it and believe what Jesus told them was pos possible. That same thing is true for us today. When we believe the word, when we believe what Jesus says, when we believe that all things are possible, Jesus said, not only are you going to do what I did, you are going to do more. You're going to do greater works than I did. That's, that's the goodness of God that he says, no, nah, we, we can do even more than that. So I want you to have your faith stirred up. I want you to spend time reading the word. I want you to spend time praying in tongues. If you've been practicing praying in tongues, if you've been spending some time doing that, um, if you're, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, praise God. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet, to overflowing where you pray in tongues, tongues is an amazing part. It's for everybody. You're allowed to have it, and you can benefit from it. I encourage everyone to go um, dig into that. If you check out our website, we've got a prayer. We'll walk you through there. And I want you to have everything God has for you. God wants you to have that for you way more than even I do. So let's say this uh, out loud because time's running short. Say, I can do what God says I can do. On the count of three, one, two, three. I can do what God says I can do. Praise God. Let's pray. Thank you, God. We are unlimited. You've given us your divine nature. You've imparted to us your nature. You gave us the keys to the kingdom. You said all keys were given to Jesus, and then Jesus told us what to do. So we are the body of Christ, and we operate in that kingdom authority. And we are here, like Jesus, to set, to bind up the brokenhearted and to set the captives free, to heal the sick and raise the dead. We thank you, God, for your glory. We thank you, God, that you love us, and we thank you, God, that you lead us and guide us into reaching other people with your love. We ask, even today, even today, that you lead us and guide us to somebody who needs to know that you love them and that we can extract them out of that darkness into an eternal world of light. And we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us. Really appreciate it. Do check out the description. There's a lot of good stuff down there below. Uh, newsletter. We've got some books. We've got a book about uh, these 40 days. Yeah, keep you keep it going every day. It's it's a quick read. It's it's not as in-depth as what these talks are, uh, but it's something that can stir you up for a minute every morning, and it's worth it. I would say please check it out, and we'll see you again tomorrow.